Black Mirror Bandersnatch has come out and it is an interactive nightmare. This very concept is exactly what inspired me to make a video about Black Mirror and its psychedelic creators. Those guys have definitely done their fair share of psilocybin or LSD. They threw in little hints and Easter eggs in one of the previous episodes also regarding a video game. That one was the Foreigner Abroad. He tries out this horror game, ends up getting stuck in it. It's very reminiscent of a bad trip. Now, this episode or movie isn't really a bad trip in just that it's creepy, but there is one distinct scene where they're literally taking LSD, and that's why we're here today. My name is Mike Ravi. Thanks so much for joining us in. It's past midnight. It's the perfect time. Stay tuned. <laughs> So first off, the episode that we were discussing was playtest. There was three main examples. One of them was really obvious. In the office of the CEO of the video game company, you have three images and they're all making up a mushroom. The little game chip that they put in the back of their brain and it wires them into the game. It's in the shape of a mushroom and also its name. And finally, the actual trip the bad trip phase is when he starts seeing his nightmares and he gets stuck in his world and he starts losing himself, ego dissolution, depersonalization, derealization, extreme fears and delusions, and then, oh, okay, it's over, everything's fine. Spoiler alert, the trippy ending where, oh no, everything isn't fine. He's stuck in there forever or he's dead. Which one is it? That just really fucks with your head. But Bandersnatch, the interactive movie, takes things to the next level. Now, we're going to be switching over to other people's opinions and the little maps. So again, spoilers for everybody. But one thing I do want to say is when Tangerine Dream Phaedra was an option, I didn't even bother to look at the other album. Of course, oh my God, that is an Easter egg in itself. Tangerine Dream, guys. If you have never experienced Tangerine Dream while tripping or smoking a little marijuana, do that tonight or do that next week. It's recommended in areas where it's legal and if you're okay with medicinal marijuana or recreational marijuana. But when you are sufficiently stoned, Tangerine Dream just glides you right in. It's smooth sailing. It's oh euphoric. Pedro was one of the more fucky albums, I do have to admit, but hey, it's kind of like Pink Floyd's first albums. You just have to have a very specific taste for him. Now, when Love on a Real Train came on during the actual LSD scene, oh my goodness. So Colin and Stefan, those were one of the two main characters. Colin gives Stefan a tab and it's the solution to his problems or at least his girlfriend Colin's girlfriend Kitty's like are, are you gonna help him out with this and he's like ah yeah so he gives him a tab and then starts going complete bozo mode like delusional as in everything makes sense in the world now but really the government is watching this and we're just rats stuck in this and you know Pac-Man Pac-Man ah we're just like Pac-Man it's the golden cage we think we're free but we're always stuck and we're always controlled by other people and what is willpower willpower is gone and then next thing you know jump out the window which that in particular really spooked me because when we were coming up to the edge I had a very particular story which uh, let's switch on over to it. So the authenticity of some Reddit stories, unfortunately, will never be able to be verified. Just as random strangers you encounter may be telling a story and it's completely bullshit. However, there have been many actual reports of people jumping off of high places and killing themselves under the influence. And this doesn't necessarily have to pertain to psychedelics. However, having been through this state myself, I understand that you can go through some severe thought loops. You are an inexperienced tripper it can bring you close to just killing yourself because you want it to stop you will do whatever it is because you are so in the moment that everything else is tuned out you are confused you forget who you are you forget everything about life all you are focused on is 
What the fuck is going on? Is this a trip? You forget you're tripping. You forget you're on a drug. You forget who you are. You might hear these constant thoughts going in and out of your head. These are hallucinations. But in this world, if you can't handle it, if you took too much, if you're inexperienced and you weren't prepared for it, if you have a history of mental disease in your family, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Not everybody is prepared for psychedelics. Unfortunately, some people kill themselves. So we're starting off with this story, my last trip ever and probably one of the worst trips out there. This was in Mexico and this freaked me out because I read this while I was in Mexico. I remember I smoked weed and I was super paranoid about it. I was like, oh my God, like what happens? I was in a gated community, of course. But Mexico is not a place that I like to just be wandering around. Sober is dangerous, but when you are in a vulnerable state, oh, the corrupt police and everything. So I'm going to just read a couple bits and pieces and you'll understand why it ties in with the story. I haven't shared this a lot since it happened. I haven't gotten into full detail. Me and one of my best friends got a couple of double dipped acid tabs. It was not our first time. We decided to record ourselves in case we said some deep insights about life or random thoughts. The acid was very strong, really strong, and it basically swept us off our feet, made us enter this trance state for what seemed an eternity. In that time, I faintly remember my mind floating and just not knowing what was happening. And I remember seeing my friend also on the floor and saying, when is this going to end? And as soon as one person says something like that, everybody else in the room, uh oh, yeah, let's not think about it. No, now our brain's thinking about that and it's going to go into a thought loop. We just couldn't move, literally. After a while, we somehow were able to move and started saying, this is it, we broke through, we're seeing the framework of the universe now. We decided to go to the terrace on the third floor of my apartment complex and there we both got lost in our minds again. And again, I cannot remember exactly what was happening. Your brain is just flooded with dopamine, serotonin, all these neurotransmitters. There's a lot of activity going on. You're not going to be able to remember everything that's happened. I lost my mind for who knows how many hours. I kind of lived a fantasy. And then suddenly I came back to the real world when I heard a big impact. The worst thing happened and my buddy somehow went crazy and jumped from the third floor, effectively killing himself. When a neighbor saw a naked man lying dead on the floor, they called the police. I went running to him and held him on my hands, trying to reanimate him. The next minute I know when the police arrived and I'm being taken. And the rest of the story, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. It gets pretty graphic, so he gets taken to prison. Of course, he's under the influence of LSD still, and LSD being a substance that can lead you on a 12-hour trip. While they're interrogating him... Uh, it, it just gets nasty. So he got beat up in jail. He didn't get raped, but he was close to that happening. He was close to getting killed by himself. I think he had to pay a ransom, as you do in Mexico. And now he's got some severe trauma for the rest of his life. Here we have another story. My friend committed suicide on acid. My friend died jumping out of the window on LSD. And I know there's a lot of myths and rumors about this. But these cases actually happened. I think it was two years ago in Australia. An actor's son jumped off a cliff, killed himself. In New York, there was a stockbroker that had a party. He killed himself. In London, there was a college student. He jumped out, boom, killed himself. Now, the whole theme that's very common in this, usually the people are naked. And the reason for this is you're so confused, you just forget what clothes are. You, you forget who you are, what the universe is, the entire existence of everything. You don't care about your clothes. You don't care about what other people are thinking about you. You're just caring for this to end. And when you're in the middle of a trip or it's even getting worse because it got bad from it, you know, the get go, you can't just stop a trip unless you have benzodiazepines, you know, the trip killers on you, which most of these people, they don't know about that. So I went through that where I also got naked. I was, you know, in a hospital. There were these weird suicidal thoughts, which usually that doesn't happen in a sober state, but in my case, it was just flooded, right? You can't control the thought loops. No matter what some psychonauts will say, when you take a high enough dose, for me it was 400 micrograms. For others, it might be as low as 200 or 100. I, I, I was completely fucked out of it. You can have a really bad time. But I am a pro psychedelics channel. I know that may seem pretty crazy, but there's a good side and a bad side to everything. And in this scene, I just felt it was so creepy. LSD has such a creepy side to it. And that's if you're around the wrong people. So first of all, he was inexperienced in this scene. He was with somebody who's fucking crazy, right? He doesn't know him. He doesn't trust him. It's a weird relationship. And the dude ends up killing himself. <laughs> so like, you know, these delusional thoughts. 
but the actual acid scene while it's still up without copyright you can check it out fantastic whoever did the lighting it looks so much like enter the void but it's beautiful i love when they're out on the balcony it's just like mixes in with the music perfectly so another post on rlsd black mirror bandersnatch had a pretty realistic depiction of lsd i won't spoil what goes on in the scene da 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 Whoops, I did, sort of. And a lot of people do agree. Some are saying that it's not exactly it. The lighting, the laughing, the ideas. If we pretend for a minute they aren't delusional like the Pac-Man one, the swirling colors he sees is a bit exaggerated, but otherwise it gets the vibe right. And just as I had to exaggerate with my LSD replication video, where here you can find it, you need to exaggerate that for some people to understand, but it also has to be realistic for those who have tripped that they're like, oh yeah, well this can happen to some people on high doses or if they're really sensitive to it. There was one point with his his uh, face changing, hold up, here we go, where, where the eyes get really weird, of course that was way exaggerated. Here is how faces might change, so this one, as you can see, it gets a, the, the, the colors get a little bit different, the sensitivity to everything, it looks almost like an Instagram filter, right? And of course this is done with Photoshop and other animation programs. But this is what it sort of feels like. You're kind of part of a cartoon. You're tripping, right? Now, if you are interested in a lot of this replication stuff, where this is not a replication, this is uh, <laughs> this is an exaggeration, but that's what I was thinking of, where the, in this horror movie, Truth or Dare, you see the, like these evil faces, <laughs> and, you know, the upside down ones. Well... You can see this if you're experiencing a really, really bad trip and you're looking at people and you're freaked out because their faces are going up and down and you don't know if they're smiling or if they're going to kill you or, or what the hell's going on. But when everything is nice and happy, you can look at normal replications without the headspace or if you just take a benzodiazepine with your LSD, you can see the floor. Here we're going to see, wondering if you should smoke a bowl. Oh, that looks really dope. Which, by the way, you should definitely be very careful of mixing LSD and marijuana if you're not prepared. It can go wrong, but it can also be a wonderful experience. Definitely for the experienced psychonauts out there, seeing patterns on the floor. Oh, yeah, I like how he's sort of moving around. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah, little stars and stuff. And by the way, you can find this on our replications. There's a whole bunch of these. Cork board, Christmas tree moving around a little bit. As somebody that is anxious, this just made me more anxious. What if I ever have a freak out delusion to do something like that in the acid scene? Lots of people get called the void on acid too. That paired with unclear thinking could be a disaster. Another person said, I can relate. It sort of stops me from ever going to a high dose. Call the void is that feeling you get when you stand in a high place and you feel like jumping. You want to kill yourself, but you're just, it's morbid curiosity, right? Some people, while tripping, they might actually want to kill themselves and risk it all to explore if there's another world out there where at the end of the day this is where it gets really fucked up life is the real trip we are all going to die we are all made up of the same energy and matter and in terms of science if the big bang did actually happen we all came from a singular point in the universe where there was no universe back then for those of you that that's too much netflix takes interactive storytelling to the next level with black mirror Bandersnatch comes with five possible ending. Viewers who choose the quickest path and decide against any do-overs can make it through the film in around 40 minutes, while the average viewing time is around 90 minutes. Altogether, there are over a trillion unique permutations of the story. However, this also includes relatively simple iterations that don't necessarily alter the story itself. For instance, one of the first decisions is helping Stefan to choose which cereal to eat in the morning. We want viewers to have a successful choice early on. In terms of spoilers, there was actually a map drawn out which shows you the flowchart of every decision that you make. And I didn't get to this, but Colin somehow comes back. Colin is either dead, missing, or on a TV interview, which Stefan watches from prison. Where is Colin? And Colin actually comes over and he gets you fucked and you go to jail. But if you go through this flow chart, you're actually able to discover that Colin, during the LSD scene, if you refuse to take LSD, he would poison your tea with LSD. So you'd start tripping regardless, but I would imagine that would go down much worse. And that is a snap at Pink Floyd's Sid Barrett, probably, and maybe the Beatles as well. 
where Sid's tea was laced with LSD many times. And then he eventually went crazy. But that was probably not due to the LSD being the main factor. However, I'm sure it played a definite role in it. By the way, I will have links in the description for my LSD replication video for those of you who are curious as to how LSD sort of looks like. The experiences will vary depending on every individual out there. I think in my personal opinion, the creators of this show did the very best they could. You do have to understand that they're still doing it from a Hollywood-esque aspect. They have to make it as realistic as possible without ruining the actual movie. <sighs> <clears throat> also, if you want to go more in depth about playtest, I do have a video on that. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out the links in the description for my other medias. And see you guys probably in a week or less. Right now, my current task is to learn the physics formulas. We're starting with physics and chemistry first. Oh boy, wish me luck. Oh, and happy new year, by the way. I guess that's a pretty important one. But I already feel like it's 2019. Bye. <laughs>